All right, so if you guys seen the post, we got ourselves a new guy that's gonna be helping us out in the actual paint shop here. So I'm looking forward to this one because this would be as if it was you guys coming to work here, how I would teach you from day one, what you're gonna start out learning and hopefully getting some good knowledge out of it and maybe being able to continue this on as a good career. So, all right, so this here's my man Bryce and uh, this go. got sprung on me today and I figured I'd start off this morning with you guys and meeting him with me, that way we could uh, go ahead and introduce him to the channel. So this is Bryce. Hey, y'all. And you've never done anything to do with body work or paint, right? Never. And you're interested in learning, though. All right, so this here's the guy, and uh, we're going to do our best to teach him what we know. If you guys have anything to, you can uh, you know, give him to as a new guy starting out in the shop, leave that in the comments, too, because I'm sure there's plenty of you guys that are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it could help him learn, too from that side of it. So today we're gonna start out with him on his first day and I'm gonna teach him some of the basic stuff that way he doesn't screw anything up. Cause you know, we don't want him ruining cars. We wanna teach him on stuff that he's not gonna actually screw up on. So you down for that? Yes sir. All right, let's do it. Stuff All right, sure. so first thing he's gonna do is put on some gloves cause we're gonna have him clean down the job in the booth. So this is his first day. Like I was telling you guys, we're gonna go over the basics with him. And being that this is his first day and I wasn't really even aware that he was going to be starting today, I'll have a regular list of the procedures. That's what I give to my guys whenever I start out with them and I train them. I give them a list of all the prepping and how I like it done. And that's what we'll start out with tomorrow. But as we start out here today, we're going to just go ahead and wing it. And uh, we definitely wanted to get his hands treated and covered up with the protection stuff. So he's going to be wiping this one down. You can't screw up wiping it down, hopefully. And uh, he's going to go ahead and prep saw it. And then he's going to hit it with the waterborne. That way, this thing is all cleaned up nice. So I told him, what do you always clean first? The blends, the blends. Oh, yeah, the blend. Always clean the blend because it's the cleanest. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have a dirty rag on the blend panel okay. leaving yeah. smudges. So let's go ahead and get this thing wiped down with the prep saw. And then we'll do the waterborne. Yeah, you want to make sure it's wet. That way it's gonna actually pick up the actual uh, dirt and different solvents that are on it. So he's using the microfibers. He's got a clean microfiber towel that he's gonna be using on the uh, prep salt. And then he's gonna be using the waterborne cleaner after the solvent. That way we cut down on the uh, static as well as cleaning some of the waterborne contaminant stuff on there. So. He's gonna continue on. He's doing pretty good right now. Like I said, first day on the job, you know. First thing we're gonna have to do is tell him he's gonna probably have to get some new shorts because, you know, it looks like he's heading off to the beach. We wear pants over here, you know. Work pants, the shoes, he's got the hey dudes on. I don't know. What do you think? I like it, I like it. He likes it, he says. So do half at a time, that way you keep it wet. So. So hit this, spray it, and then yep. wipe it. That way it okay. stays wet. Yep. You wanna make sure that you're actually picking up the contaminants. It actually, what it does is it kinda hits the contaminant and uh -huh. it pulls it up into a puddle. Okay. And it'll actually stay there. That way you can get it wiped off. So what do you see something? Yeah, right there. Yeah, that's just old paint work. So when you see something like that, it's always good to ask that way mm -hmm. we don't have a problem yep. but uh this was prepped out by me not you so we know it's right 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 all right so one thing i was telling him with the prep salt is when he's spraying down the panel don't really try to wet it up too much around the tape because that will let loose the glue that starts to actually eat into the glue being it's a prep salt and a solvent so first thing he's got to do is uh wax and grease it but i wanted to make sure i told him that because that prep saw can definitely loosen up the tape and actually put some of the glue onto the panel if you get it too wet. So you just want a nice thin mist of the prep saw, get it cleaned up, and uh, don't soak it around your edges too much around the tape. All right, so he's doing a good job wiping them down. Once we get this clean, we'll bring him out in the shop and we'll get him on some parts that he can uh, start prepping out with. That way he can learn some of that stuff. All right, so I was telling him if he sees any smudges any further up, being this is a white, you guys know that the white likes to leave marks sometimes with the uh, prepping. And then if you touch it with your hand, you'll leave some smudges on it. 
I was telling them we're blending the quarters for the trunk. We're not going to be doing anything down here because this is the original bumper going back on this car. This was a hail damage car and uh, we're going to be just blending the tops of the quarters. So I was letting him know while he was wiping it down to look for any kind of smudges that may be further up here where we're not going to be putting any paint. That way we do not clear over the blend panel and have marks in it later. So that's a big deal on these whites. If you're, uh, you know, doing them, you got to make sure that you look for anything that may be further than where we're going to put paint. All right, so now he's hitting it with the waterborne cleaner. Always doing the blends first, same thing. Go ahead, get your blend panels clean before you step onto your new parts or your repaired parts. So I like to prep saw all the parts first and then hit it with the waterborne. That way it cuts down on the static. You guys know I've talked to you guys about that plenty of times. So he's gonna get this thing finished up, wiping it down, and then we'll get him out here doing some of the prep work. All right, so first thing I was telling him here is that we have ROs. This is the RO number for the vehicle. And all the parts will have this on them when they're in the actual bins over there in the back. And they'll have the body man's name on it. And they usually put how many parts there are for the vehicle. So we are gonna start letting them prep out some of the parts. And I'm gonna show them here how the first thing you wanna do is secure these with some zip ties because this here fender is very loose on this stand here and uh, you don't want to lose them. So we're going to go ahead and get some zip ties, get it attached to the stand, and then we're going to get the door and the parts for this one here and have them prep them out. All right, so we got the zip ties. I handed it to them. So when you're attaching these here to the actual stand, you want to make sure that you get it in an area that isn't going to be visible on the outside. So if we have that strapped around here on this, it's not going to be that big of a deal if there's a little bit of black yeah. on here. So make sure you strap it around an area that's not going to be on the outside. If you can strap it to where it gets paint all around is even better. Mm -hmm. But for now, we want to make sure we don't lose this here fender on the floor. So we'll get it zip tied up, then we'll grab the other part and we'll have them start prepping. This is a good spot to go through some of the holes on the inner fender liner even. And that way you keep this from flapping off when you're sanding it. And that way this will be safe and uh, not on the floor because I've definitely had a couple of these myself come off of the uh, rack and then uh, have a problem. All right, so let's try to get it to where we can get a little bit of paint on there and I think we'll be all right with that. All right, help me out with this here door. This here has got the same RO number on it as that there uh, fender. All right, so you see here, we've got the hooks on that. Go ahead and get that hooked up on that one spot there. Right here? Yeah, do that there. And then this one will go here. That way you can uh, prep it out. And then this one here goes in maybe one of the holes like this. Yeah. And that's it. We've got that on here now for him. So we're going to show him here now. First thing he's going to do is get this cleaned off. And we're going to have him use the red scuff pad with the cleaning solution, the waterborne. That way it'll take off all the writing clean it up. This here had a bad paint job in it. You guys can see here, somebody did a very bad of job of prepping out this door here. We're only blending this one. So we're going to try to do our best with this one. And uh, this was some terrible, terrible work that was done to this here vehicle. And this isn't the stuff here that we want to actually be a part of, but this is just a blend. So we're going to go ahead, get it cleaned off, scrub it down. We're going to use the red scuff pad and the same waterborne cleaner that we used when we did the cleaning in the booth. And then we'll get it prepped out for the blend. All right, so we'll let him do this while I start painting on that Subaru in there. And then uh, we'll see how he ends up doing on this here blend panel. Yeah, wet it up good and then just clean it. Don't get crazy around this because we're just blowing a blend on it. So okay, just clean it, scrub it, I scrub over it. You can yeah. scrub over it, but scrub around here. Uh -huh. Just scrub it up good and then we'll yeah. get into the sanding. All right, so he did a nice job of scuffing it up and cleaning it. I told him this really wasn't to sand it, but it also does help around the edges of the blend panels when you're scuffing it and cleaning it at the same time. So he's got that done really nicely. He did a thorough job on it. So we're going to get him now on the new part here. We did have a little bit of a repair up here on the new fender. 
and uh, we're gonna get that blocked out and then we'll DA the fender down with a uh, 400. So like I said, tomorrow being, I know he's gonna be here now. I'll have all the stuff that he needs. That way he doesn't have to ask me, come looking for me. I can just stay busy doing what I'm doing unless he has a problem that he needs me for. He could look at the paperwork that I'm gonna be giving him. That way he can just stay steady on learning and uh, doing what we need him to do here. All right, so first thing I was telling them here is that we're gonna be using a guide coat. And this here is, once you put this on here, you're gonna sand it down and it's gonna be removed. If you had a low spot or a pinhole or anything like that, this is gonna stay in the low areas okay. if there was some type of damage on this. So this is what we're gonna use, especially for a new guy. We're gonna go ahead and hit this with a guide coat and then we'll have them block it out with the Festool. All right, we gave him a dust mask. Even though we're using the fest tool, I want to teach him in case he ever gets to a shop that he doesn't have the fest tool. So we've got it guide coated now, and I'm going to show him how to block this out. We're going to hit it with a 400 on the fest tool. This must have been just a little bit of body work on here, being this is a new fender, so we don't have to go with a coarse grit. So what it is is the grit is based off of what we're doing here. If you're going to be blocking this, we normally would maybe start out with a 320 because we wanna make sure that we get the body work straight if this was a repair. But being that this is gonna be a new part, I'm sure this was very minimal. So yeah. we're gonna use a 400 grit. And tomorrow, like I said, we'll go over more of the grits. But today, I just wanna get you some of the basics. And so let's go ahead and get this thing blocked out. All right, so this here's the vacuum sander and uh, we got a piece of 400 on it. So go ahead and turn that on to uh, manual. See where it says manual? Hit that switch. All right, so. That's gonna let that start sucking the dust. Okay. So when you're doing something like this, you wanna be able to run it in an X pattern. So you'd go this way, yeah. and then you would take it this way. So you may turn your hand and then come over here on this side of it, switch hands up. That way you're blocking it in an X pattern. And that's gonna get this straight because you wanna use a block Go ahead and turn that off a minute. So what you want to do is, if this was a big, big repair, you would use a bigger, longer block. But being that we know this is something minor, I think you just had to tweak this where the uh, hood lines up. We're going to go with a smaller block. And you want to keep this straight. You want to run it nice and smooth is in long strokes and cross pattern it. That way you'll get it blocked out the best way. And you don't want to sand on edges with it. You want to kind of block it in the actual shape that the fender is. That way you uh, get the best outcome on it. So we'll let you block it a little bit. All right, so Thank first you first thing you'll want to do is, are you righty or lefty? Righty. Righty? So it's going to be tough on this because of being uh, on the stand. So take your, so you come over here on this side, come on that side of it. Yep. Now run your hand up here and block it like this, like right. That way you got some force, you're holding on the block better and you're able to go with the roundness of it. So you'll get used to it more once you go ahead and you, you get a, a feel for it. But in the beginning, it's gonna all feel kind of awkward to you in the beginning. All right, so he's gonna be blocking it now the other way. I told him switch his hands and uh, that way he could get kind of an X pattern with it. But any of you guys that have blocked out a car know when you first started out, it was definitely very awkward until you get the hang of it. So we're gonna let him finish blocking it, then we'll hit it with a DA, and then we'll get this thing prepped out. Up there on the top. Well, this is, like I said, now you can say, see how that stayed black? Mm -hmm. That's what the guide coat is yeah. for. So now that was a good observation you had. This is actually a little higher up on the edge than this is because of the way this is stamped when they make it. So you're not gonna worry about that too much because that is just the stamping of the actual part. If this was in here in the middle, then we'd have something to worry about. But being, it's up here on the edge, we know it's just from this being a little bit higher up gotcha. than the actual part. So now that we got it blocked, we'll go ahead and we'll get our DA and we'll start DA sanding it. All right, so that's a Velcro. You guys see this here, I was telling them, is got the hook and loop and that'll stick right on there now when you get a new piece, get a 400. And you guys see here, we're gonna be switching out this. It's wore out if you see something. You'll get probably like five minutes out of each piece of this. Don't just keep changing it. You wanna to try to get the most out of each piece because otherwise you're wasting money. So uh -huh. 
let's go ahead and we'll get a piece of 400 on here these are going to be your grits that we're using and uh, i usually have them 400 600 and 800 grit and it starts from the coarsest to the finest so that way if you come over to this stand uh -huh. you'll see it's labeled 400 on it but i know just because i have them in here in a certain way so yep. start with 400 on a new part bring that over here and you have an adjustment on here that'll turn it up and down i usually go almost all the way to it slow because mm -hmm. you don't really need it turned up that high so okay. go ahead this is the trigger on it and now you'll start on this here area, mm -hmm. you'll want to take away some of these the scratch marks that you see from yeah. the actual block and get this all consistently sanded. So oh, go ahead and try that out. Huh? Same way? Same way. Just you'll feel it once it gets moving. All right, so now that we've got it sanded pretty good, thoroughly, we're gonna get a red scuff pad and he's gonna get down in here and all around the edges to make sure we get it scuffed up good. So we'll start out with the red scuff pad like you did when you did the cleaning on the brim. And then we'll get this thing scratched around all the edges. So this here will scuff dry. And you you wanna make sure that you scuff all around all the areas here. So we use a chromatic sealer at this shop here, but I'm not sure if you're gonna be at a shop all the time that's gonna have that product. Mm -hmm. So. You're going to want to make sure that you scuff all in here, all around every area, and dull it out like this, up in here, and all around the edges. So, over here at this shop, we don't really have to scuff this, but I want to teach you to where if you ever went somewhere else, mm -hmm. then they don't have the right sealer, you're going to be good. So, you want to scuff every area that you can see, okay. all around here, all around here, and the better you do, the better it is. So. Okay. Go ahead and get that scuffed up. All right, so he did a really nice job of scuffing it down. He got all the edges really good. That's what I want to see from this guy. I want to see how thorough he is because those are the things that you have of your natural ability. When I give you something to do when you don't know what you're doing, if you take the extra time and you really try to get into these areas and you give it a good scuff down, it's a good sign that I got a good worker here. So we got him going a good, I think I might take him to lunch on his first day. Hell yeah and uh, buy him a sandwich. You guys know I always bring my sandwich or bring my salad, but the old lady left me hanging and it's kind of coincidence this guy shows up. Now we can go get something together. So we're gonna head out. We'll do a little talking with him on the way and we'll get something to eat and then we'll get back to the shop. All right, so we're headed now to go get something to eat. We're getting headed over to the car now. You ready to eat? Oh, yeah. I'm starving. All right, so you guys see here, we're walking over here, and uh, the shop's over there. So we are going to have some really good content coming to you guys soon here. And uh, you guys are going to want to really be tuned in for this one when we get to that stage of what's going to be going on. So we're going to get in the car now. And uh, we're going to go pick up something to eat and then we're going to head on back. But you see all this land here. Stay tuned. All right, so we're headed down to get a sandwich. And I was just talking with Bryce and uh, he was telling me about his last job. So you were doing a lineman job, you said. Yes, sir. I work for Irving Construction. And uh, you said you had some tough times come across oh yeah lost my hard hat got laid off for it fired terminated whatever you want to call it that not the best thing to happen but what can you do about it yeah that stuff happens but sometimes you know it may be a blessing in disguise yeah. so well i'm looking you know forward to teaching you and i think it'll be pretty good so far we've been doing pretty good with yeah, it so I'm looking forward to it as well should be pretty fun always learning new stuff so yeah even if this doesn't you know end up being your career yeah. this is something here that you can always have yep. and uh, use later if you ever had bad times or something like that yep. so i've had a good living with it my whole life and uh, it's always paid the bills and yep. above and beyond with it so i think you're in the right place yeah, at the right time so
All right, let's get this food and stop this let's talking. Eat. All right, so we had to show you the sandwiches over there at Larry's, and uh, this place really has a real good sandwich. He says he's got a better one by him, but I don't think that uh, he's gonna really know what he's talking about here once he bites into the old Larry's. I'll give it a try. Pretty good. I told you Mike's ain't got nothing on Larry's. I don't know, it's not similar. <laughs> See that? You'll do all right hanging out with me. All right. all right, so we got him getting another stand for the bumper. We got another OE Mercedes bumper here we're gonna be putting on there. And we're gonna have him scuff that down with the blue sky pad, right? All right, that's this here. He knows what he's doing on that. He's done some already with it. And then I'm handling the blend on this one here because this here is that door. You guys can see some of the real nice work the last guy did on this used door here. And uh, we do not want to have to burn the edges on this one. So I'm going to save myself the headache and go ahead and get this thing prepped out myself because we're just doing a blend on this one. But we're going to go ahead and let him load up the bumper. Let's see if he's got this figured out now after I've showed him it, what way it goes, where to clamp it, and uh, how it works on this stand here. So, so far he's got it. He got lucky, I think. He was getting ready to spin it. And then he figured out he was right, actually. All right, this guy might not be too bad. Somebody was saying he might make it two weeks. I don't know, this guy might make it three weeks, maybe. Maybe. All right, he's all loaded up, and now he'll hit it with the sky pad. All right, so he got the bumper all scuffed down nice and blew it off. I didn't even have to tell him about that. And then he was over here sanding down this other piece but I caught him with his mask off. So we got him masked up. You guys know that we want to definitely teach these younger guys to wear the masks because a lot of us guys back in the day were kind of neglecting ourselves and uh, not taking it serious. But it's definitely a chemically, you know, invasive type of uh, job. So you want to cover up, especially this guy only being 19 years old. I don't want anybody coming looking for me. So. He's gonna get this sanded down with the DA and then we'll get all these parts that he prepped out in the booth and uh, we'll have him do his wipe down on them. All right, so he already went ahead and did the prep sole on it and he started out on the right panel, the blend. So the guy's catching on and uh, he's doing a decent job here so far with us. One thing he did again was he forgot the gloves, so we got to keep an eye on this guy for the protection, for the glove and the mask, because uh, we want to make sure that he's going to be safe as well doing this job, not only learning the skills, but we got to keep him healthy. So he's wiping them down. We got this as the last load here of the day. Then we'll go outside and we'll finish up if we got to get anything primed up. But he's going to continue cleaning everything up here and uh, getting it wiped down. We've got. I think three different jobs, three or four different jobs in here. We've got here the RAV4, we've got a, a VW in here, we've got a Fusion, and then we have a Mercedes. So we got a decent sized load, and then doing that Subaru for him on his first day ain't too bad. So I think the best time he had so far was eating that sandwich over there from Larry. So, but we'll get this loaded up and uh, we'll finish out this video here and we'll give you uh, the end result on this guy's first day. All right, so we got a raw one over there, and what's the raw bumper mean? Just plastic, no right. primer. All right, so that takes a certain special cleaner. We're going to go ahead and wipe it on. We haven't done any of those yet with them here. These are all prime parts, and then we use our waterborne cleaner. So this here, RAV4, we got a raw bumper on it. So we're going to go ahead and get the alcohol mixed up, and uh, once I get my list, you guys will see how he'll know everything, what he's doing, and how he's doing it. That way it'll uh, be very simple for him to just catch on and uh, get rolling. So 
We're gonna go ahead and fill up the pump sprayer with the alcohol and then he's gonna clean down that one last bumper so this load will be ready to paint. Let's see if this guy's as shaky as me. If we get anything on the ground here, we're gonna be uh, coming out of his pay. All right, so we've wiped all the parts in the booth and this is one that he did earlier. I showed you guys before lunch. He did a nice job of scuffing it down and cleaning it. And uh, I like to scuff them down and get them cleaned up before I even prime it. That way it's one step closer and then I don't have to worry about any water when I'm sanding. I can just go ahead into the prep work and be done. So we put a rear body panel on this one here, this here BMW. And uh, we're going to be putting a new trunk, new bumper, blending the quarters on it. But you guys can see here he did a nice thorough job of scratching it up, cleaning it, and hitting it up with the red scuff pad. So, so far so good. I think I'll have him wrap a little bit of... Uh, paper around this one here so we can prime up this here quarter panel and uh, get it primed up for later all right so we're going to have a mask up this area here see the seam sealer yeah run your tape right along here mm -hmm. and i want to come out at least 12 inches around the actual bodywork. that way there's no chance of priming up to the tape because okay. you never want to have the primer hit the tape otherwise you'll have a line in it so you got to take in consideration we're doing the blend, so you want to mask around it. And I'm going to just let you do your thing on it. Go ahead and mask it up to this. Uh -huh. Come along here on the seam sealer. Okay. And then come down and just leave this area here that I can spray with the primer. Okay. And then uh, run the paper all around it. Let's see what he's got. All right, so he did a pretty good job, and uh, he listened to what I had told him to do there. He covered up it pretty good, went around it, and uh, not bad at all. So, so far, so good on his first tape job. And uh, you guys know how it is when you start a new job. Everything is kind of not familiar to you, so you're trying to really grasp what the actual, you know, outcome is that you're trying to go from. So, he's doing good. He's got the cleaning down. He's got some of the sanding down. He's got some of the uh, taping down just the first day stuff and then you'll get more familiar with it so i've trained a lot of guys through the years and uh, it takes a good couple of weeks before they get into the groove on it but once they get on the groove you won't have to really talk to them as much you'll just have to tell them what to do and they'll do it so not bad for his first tape job and uh, we'll see what else we can have him do here before the end of the day is up all right you hear this guy we got to get him a little motivated he's like a laid-back guy this guy <laughs> All right, so we'll figure out what we got rest of the day for him, and uh, we'll check it out. All right, so I'm going to have him scuff around this. This is just treated with a red scuff pad and the cleaner. I want to get a better scratch in this so that when we prime it. So I'm going to have him hit this with 600 grit around the primer and then a red scuff pad. That way we have good adhesion for the primer. So the reason we're doing this now is so that way when we put the primer on, mm -hmm. the primer is going to stick to the scratch. So you want to make sure you scuff around the actual repair because uh -huh. the primer is going to probably go out to about here. Okay. So you want to make sure your scratches are further than the actual primer is going to be. That okay. way it's sticking all the way up and all the way to the edge. Okay. So once you get done scuffing it up with that, then you can hit it with the red scuff pad. But first thing right you there. don't ever want to do is, I've seen you doing, never sand with your fingers like this. Yeah. When you sand with your fingers, you're gonna leave finger lines. Okay. So you wanna make sure if you're gonna ever use your hand, you wanna turn your hand to where you're sanding sideways. Okay. Because you'll leave marks in it, like nice. this. Yeah. So go ahead, do that, finish it up. Like that? Right, just for Even adhesion. Like that? Yeah, that's fine. And then take that pad off of there and hit it with just the red. So what do you think the next step would be now after you scuff this down? With the prep saw that I that we use in the booth? Yep. Go ahead, blow this, and then hit it with the prep saw. That way this is ready to prime. And what that does is it takes all the dust out of the scratches. Mm -hmm. So now it's going to bite nice. All right, Bryce. So we got that one taped up. What I like to do now is, being it's getting towards the end of the day, mm -hmm. go take a walk around to all the body men and ask them if they're going to have anything coming over to prime tonight. All right. That way, once we mix up a batch of this, yep we know we can hit them all at one time. Yep. So 
Go sense. make your round, see if there's anything else coming over, right. and then we'll uh, see what we got to do. All right, so he did a good job on this one, taping it up for primer, as well as the bumper over here. He got it fully sanded out. That way we can go ahead and get this thing primed up. So, so far he's doing a good job, and I think he got one other part here primed up for the uh, wheelhouse molding for that BMW. So, how'd you uh, like your first day? You know, we went a little easy on him, yeah. so I go easy on the guy the first day. I feel him out, see what he's about, and then I get on him the second day with. All right, so what we're going to do is see here what you learn. So what did you learn first on cleaning the parts? What's the first thing hey, you man. clean? Oh, the, uh, the blends. And you start out with what kind of a cleaner? The water. wax and grease is first? And then the water board? Right. Gotcha. All right, so he's got that down almost. And oh, then I, know, he, I know what it looks like. He knows by the bottle, so yeah. he's he's uh, he's doing pretty good. And I just wanted to see what he got, you know, familiar with today. All right, so that's going to be our first day here at the shop for his first day. Hopefully, we'll see him back tomorrow. I have had guys that's worked with me one day and then they didn't show back up. But this guy seems like he's a little bit more stand up than that. And uh, I know he has links to the boss, so oh, yeah. all I got to do is make a call and then <whistles> good night. Oh, yeah. All right, so we'll see you guys on the next video where we go over the procedures. I'm gonna have everything lined up for him on what he needs to do, and then we're gonna start making something out of this guy. So oh, yeah. you in on it? Oh yeah. All right, so we'll see you guys on the next one.